Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 13 books that I read at the end of January. In the month of January, I ended up reading 28 books. If you want to know the books that I read in the first half of January, you can check out my January mid-month wrap-up that's going to be linked down below for you. So we're going to be talking about 13 books today. I read 13 books, I think from January 15th to... 31st. So let's get started. The first one I'm going to mention is Evil Twin by Katie Wilde. This is a fantasy romance novella I really, really, really enjoyed. Um, if you want to read a fantasy romance, which you don't have the time and effort to like read a full length long fantasy novel, you should definitely check this one out. Our hero in here is Bane and he is the twin brother to this king. So he was robbed of a kingdom by four minutes. His brother was born four minutes before him and he's always thought his brother it's kind of a lousy king. Like he's not a great king. He's never really liked his brother. Never liked him. He's not a great king, not a great ruler. And he thinks he can do better. So when he finds out that his brother is arranged to marry a crowned princess of a neighboring land. So when his brother marries this princess, he will be the king of both lands because she's set to inherit her kingdom. And so he's like, I can't believe this guy is going to get two kingdoms when he doesn't even deserve one. So he's going to trick the fiance of his brother. He's gonna try to like seduce her and pretend that he is his brother so that he can ruin her so that she has to marry him instead. And so things go a little bit off the rails after that. This book has a plot twist I was not expecting. My jaw like hit the floor because I did not know that there was this plot twist and I was shocked because normally I'm somebody to guess plot twists and everything. I was not expecting that with this. You have a worshiping hero in here, a kick butt heroine, like she is amazing. I love her. This is not a full five star for me simply because things happened a little bit too quickly for my taste. For tropes in here, it's a fantasy romance. It's a novella. There are plot twists. There's royalty, a worshiping hero, and a kick butt heroine. I gave this book four out of five stars. Then I ended up reading Scandalous Duke by Scarlett Scott. This was a buddy read with Rachel over at Rachel Reads and Sings. This is the fifth book in Scarlett Scott's League of Duke series. So each book in the series is about this duke who's kind of like a detective. This one isn't my favorite in the series, but I, I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars stars. So um, our heroine in here, she is originally from Ireland. And during this time period, Ireland was trying to gain independence from England. So there are a bunch of people from Ireland kind of sabotaging and kind of being terrors to uh, British society and like being a huge harm to society. There were certain um, people from the country called Fenians who would um, just try to wreak havoc in England. Um, and that was their way of trying to gain independence. Um, and so the League of Dukes is trying to take down this group of people because they're ultimately hurting people. Felix is one of the Dukes in this league and he has been tasked with kind of like a secret mission. There's this actress or singer, I think it's a singer, her name's Rose Beaumont and she is French and she's traveling from America to Britain. And apparently there's a rumor going around that she's with a Fenian and that she like works for them. So Felix has been asked to get close to her, maybe woo her um, and like know all of her secret. But what he doesn't know is that Rose Beaumont is not actually Rose Beaumont. So her name is actually Joanna McKenna and she's from Ireland. And when she was younger, she was in a very, dangerous home life situation. Her father and brother were not the nicest, to say the least. Um, and she ended up escaping that life and creating a new identity. She created a new identity. Her name is now Rose Beaumont. She put on a French accent. She travels around the world. She's very famous and she has not been able to escape her brother. Her brother has just been on her for years and he is a Fenian. He is one of these evil Irishmen. So when Johanna and um, Felix first get together, she's very upfront about the fact that I'm falling for you. This is not my real name. My real name is Joanna McKenna. He's trying to figure out how to save this woman because he's finally realizing, oh, she's been roped into this life she does not want to be a part of. Um, and I don't know how to save her from it. Overall, I really enjoyed this. This is also a single father romance. The hero in here is a widower. Um, and I really love the relationship with him and his daughter. I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. Next, I just read a little novella called A Very Krampus Holiday by Katie Robert. <laughs> Um, this is just a really short novella about uh, Krampus. If you don't know what Krampus is, he's like a evil version of Santa. There's a f bunch of like fun monster romances uh, about Krampus. So this was just a really short holiday novella, like 15 pages long. I gave it three stars. Next, I read A Kiss from the Kraken by Charlotte Swan. I was actually beta reading this book. It's the first time I ever beta read a book. Um, basically, if you don't know what beta reading is, it's before it goes to ARC readers. 
you know? So you kind of help, I think, with like editing and proofreading and stuff like that. So um, this is the first time I did that and it was super cool. I didn't know when I signed up to be on her beta reading team that this is actually the second book in a series and I had not read book one. However, you don't need to read them in order. Like each book in the series is just like a different monster romance, like a kiss from a certain creature, you know? So this is a kiss from a kraken. So our heroine in here, she is the daughter to this very rich man who made his wealth off of like finding stuff in the sea, like pearls and clams and stuff. Um, but then there's this kraken that comes and wants payment for all the stuff that her father stole basically from him, from the ocean. And um, he offers up his daughter, he sells his daughter to this kraken. Um, and the kraken takes her and like, is immediately like, this woman is mine. This woman is my mate, she's everything, I'm gonna do everything for her. And she's a little scared about this kraken obviously because it's a kraken and he's come to kidnap her <laughs> so it's just a fun little quick read i had a fun time reading it it doesn't take itself too seriously and i just thought it was really fun i ended up giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars um, i rhymed it up on goodreads because it was a beta read and i really like charlotte swan um she is a, a book talker that i really like so this was just a fun little read if you want to read about a kraken and a human woman having a good time together you, you could pick this one up <laughs> next i ended up reading love at frost light by tori jean um, this is her holiday novella that she came out with in the beginning of January. This is a just a little short novella. Our heroine is a dislikable heroine. I think that's the main, main reason why this book did not jive well with me is because I don't like reading about those characters. I don't like reading about characters, main characters you're supposed to basically despise and I did not like this heroine. I think you're supposed to like her by the end of the book. I think she's supposed to like redeem herself in your in the reader's eyes but I personally I didn't. Um, I don't know. It's very hard for me to like characters who are supposed to be dislikable. This plot is a little confusing, so I don't want to go too much into it, but our heroine and hero don't like each other. So our heroine, she's not supposed to be likable. She's best friends with this girl. She ends up not being friends with her friend anymore. Her best friend that she's been friends with since they were children, their best friend for life. She ends up not being friends with her anymore because um, she wants to be popular and she thinks her friend is holding her back. So she ditches her friend. Her friend becomes friends with this other guy and these two don't like each other. Um, and so that's that's who the romantic interests are in here. Um, it's a little fantastical. They get like put into an alternate reality in order to fall in love with each other by Christmas. It's a little bit strange. I felt like it was a little bit all over the place for me, which is so sad to say because I adore Tori Jean. I read Finding Jean Kelly. I love that book so much. This one just personally with my reading taste does not work well with me. I don't like reading about dislikable characters. I didn't think she was redeemable and the fact that she ditched her best friend that she's been friends with since she was a kid. Like I don't find that, I don't I don't think you could redeem that in my eye just because you want to be popular. I don't see any redeeming quality from that. But again that's me and my personal preference and um yeah <laughs> so I give us three stars. Um, I love Tori Jean. This one just didn't unfortunately work for me. Then I ended up reading Flawless by Elsie Silver. This was a buddy read with Zay over at Witty Reads on Instagram. I love Zay so much. And so she was rereading this book. I think she was listening to the audio for the first time because um, I think she read it on ebook and she was going to annotate it while she listened to it. And this was the first time I read it at all in general. I ended up listening to the audiobook. I bet everyone knows the summary for this book, but if you don't, this is the romance between Rhett and Summer. Rhett is a bull rider and he kind of gets in this PR scandal and Summer works for her dad's law firm company. And um, I think it's a law firm. Anyway, she just becomes his like personal relations, his PR babysitter, just to make sure he does not get into any more trouble in the media. And so she has to keep her eyes on him basically 24 7 that includes living with him so she moves into his family's like ranch house by them spending more time together this grumpy bull rider ends up falling for this like sunshine of a woman i will say i liked the second half of this book more than the first <laughs> and i also think the expectation for this book was a little bit too high for me everyone just loves this book loves elsie silver so much i was fully expecting to adore this one and unfortunately like i liked it I did not, it was not a door level for me. I really liked the characters. The banter in here was A++++. I loved the banter in here. And I also just really liked the bull riding aspect because you don't get that a lot in like any books, you know? And I feel like the third act like breakup point or the conflict, the third act fight was very reasonable. You know, like a lot of third act fights or breakups that you read about in romances, like I was like, really, did that need to happen? Like that did not need to happen, but this one was very reasonable in my eyes. And then I also just loved Rhett for multiple reasons um but i loved how persistent he was because he knew this woman was his like he knew that this woman was made for him and also rhett's mouth just makes me swoon 
what comes out of it so <laughs> Oh, like I just like I feel like books that I adore that I get five stars to I think about them all of the time and I honestly haven't really been thinking about this book I gave this book four stars it was nice it was good I'm not discounting it I really liked this book I didn't love it unfortunately I just felt like there were just moments that kind of like lagged for me and especially in the beginning so for tropes there are many you have a brooding hero a caretaking scene there's a celebrity romance because Rhett in here is a celebrity um a cowboy forced proximity great banter has a mouth on him is a new trope of mine <laughs> a one bed scene a pr babysitter sports romance and a worshiping hero again i gave this book four out of five stars Ooh, next i ended up reading next of kin by hannah bonham young i really liked this one this is the romance between chloe and warren and both of them are trying to get custody of their respective siblings warren has a teenage brother he wants to get custody of and um chloe her birth mother just gave birth and she's gonna try and get custody of her now baby sister. But both of them are missing certain aspects of their like files to like be like perfect guardians for their siblings. So Chloe is kind of like down a little bit in the financial aspect and Warren doesn't really have the best place for his brother to live with him. And so they team up and um, try and work together to get custody of each other's siblings. So like, Warren needs a place to live. Chloe has space in her apartment. So he moves in with Chloe and he helps with rent and groceries and stuff. So he helps with the financial aspect that Chloe is missing. At first, Warren is a little bit standoffish. He doesn't like getting close to people. He thinks that uh, like this is just gonna be a short time thing and he doesn't want to get close to Chloe because she's ultimately not gonna be in this life anymore. But they get to know each other and they cannot help but fall in love. I could have put this book down. I normally I read eBooks. I find myself reading a few chapters and being like, oh, okay, I need a break. Let me go scroll on TikTok, do something else. Like I just need a break. I did not need a break at all while reading this. I read it in almost a complete day. Like I was obsessed with it. I loved the discussion of like adoption, guardianship, parents. Like I loved that discussion in here. I'm also a huge sucker for like babies, infants. And so Chloe's little sister in here, Willow was, mm, I loved it. I loved the discussion of just like babies and kids and ugh. I loved it. It pulled on my heartstrings a lot because I find myself being very jealous of this very fictional character. Chloe is fictional. I felt so jealous of her that she had like, oh, I just love baby so much. She's 24. She's my age. And she has kind of like a life that I want. And um, I was just, I felt so jealous of Chloe. And I also just love reading her story and just like reading about this very unique family. I did dock this book half of a star for me for personal reasons. Warren is going through some anger issues and just one of the things he did just kind of like triggered me with some personal things and just like it just it it's my own reasoning why I docked it half of a star. Short warnings in here for parental abandonment, foster care, NICU slash preemie babies, um, and anger management struggles. For tropes, you have adoption, brooding hero, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's no third act breakup. There are babies in here. And this is a roommate's romance. Again, I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Uh, next, I ended up reading Broken by the Horde King by Zoe G. Raven. This was a buddy read with Victoria over at Victoria's Romance Reads. We are having so much fun reading these books. I love this series with my whole heart and soul. It is so good. Each book in the series takes place on this alien planet called, I think it's called Dakar, is the alien planet. So it's a planet that's filled with the Dakar people. You can kind of like see on the cover. Um, they're humanoid people. There's like a few differences with humans. I think they have like kind of like scaly looking skin. They have gold skin, they have tails, um, and they have like different colored eyes. So. They're kind of similar to humans, but not. These people are more like barbarian-esque, which I love barbarian romances, so I love I love these books. So anyway, on this planet, you have also human settlements. Humans have traveled to this planet and have made little settlements. And humans and the Dakar people don't really mix at all. And so this series is about human and Dakar people falling for each other, which is very out of the norm. So Mava was actually adopted into a Dakar family. She was wandering in the woods one day when she was three years old. She's human, by the way. This Dakar soldier ends up finding this three-year-old girl and takes, him, takes her home and adopts her into his family. And so growing up, Mava was bullied quite a lot by the other children in the village because she was the only human and she was bullied for being very ugly. Like they claimed she was ugly and that like she's the only human around. Um, but then she ends up becoming very close friends with Kieran, who is kind of set up to be the prince of the village, if you want to say that. And ever since they were children, Mava has been 
in love with him. Like she loves him so much. Um, and Kieran has kind of put her at a distance in that romantic aspect. And you read about the book why and everything, but they are best friends. And then at the point when both of them are of age, Maeva puts herself out there and confesses her feelings to Kyrian and he rejects her on the spot and she has been heartbroken since then. It's been almost 10 years since the two of them have seen each other since the point where he broke her heart and Kyrian is coming back to her village, um, back to his home village, um, and he has decided that he is not leaving without Maeva. So this book is chocked full of groveling. If you are a reader like me who loves to see a man like grovel on his knees <laughs> to say he's sorry, look no further. You need to pick this one up. I loved everything about this book. I loved Maeva. I loved how strong she is. She's actually a healer. And I love the aspect in here, how you get to read about her passion for healing people. Oh, it was beautiful. And then Kieran was so determined and loving and just worshiped the ground that Maeva walked on and would do anything to to keep her. I also just love this because it was such an interesting dynamic. You have like a friends to lovers relationship, but it's kind of like friends to betrayal to lovers. It's very interesting. I really loved it. And if you want to read about a soulmate romance, this is, they are soulmates, soulmates. For trigger warnings in here, you have grief around familial death. So please be aware of that. Uh, tropes, alien romance, alpha hero, barbarians, once betrayed. So the hero betrays the heroine at one point. Uh, childhood friends, friends to lovers, groveling. It's on Kindle Unlimited. You have a nurse, but more of a healer character, you know? Possessive hero, second chance romance, and soulmates. I gave this book five out of five stars. Next, I read King of Sword and Sky by C.L. Wilson. I'm not gonna talk too much about this because this is the third book in a fantasy romance series. There's five books in this series and they're all centered around the main couple. This main storyline, this main world, the main antagonist, like it's a story that is supposed to be very long. Um, this is an epic fantasy romance series. If you wanna read about soulmates, shifters, faded mates, like you need to pick this one up. I just wanna mention that. I gave this book five stars. I am really loving the series. I have books four and five on the way to me from thrift books. So I'm waiting to read the other books in the series, but I love these books so much. Next, I read End Dark by Honey Phillips. This is her fifth book in her Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. These are alien romances that are very much inspired by the tale of the Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. So each book is about like an alien that's on this ranch that lives on this snow planet going to the human village and kidnapping a woman because that's how they think they, they get a wife is they go and kidnap a human woman. So Endark in here ends up kidnapping one of the human women from the village and takes her back to his cabin. And he's like, you're my mate, you're mine. She's just like, she wakes up after he kidnaps her and she's like, where's my brother? And he's like, brother, you have a brother? He's like, I'm so dumb. I didn't even think whether or not you had like a family. I feel so bad. Like he felt so bad. And he goes to search for her brother. It's a very short, like these are novella length, like they're under 200 pages. Um, and so um, if you want like good, like insta cute, lovey alien romances, you need to pick this one up. This one's more faded mate. Um, the other ones in the series aren't, but this one is. His alien species have like a faded mate aspect to them. Trope is near, it's an alien romance. There's faded mates and there is kidnapping. Um, this was a really fun read. I ended up just giving this one four stars. I cannot wait for more books in the series to come out because they're just fun, short, quick reads like you know what you're gonna get and sometimes you need that in a romance book. Then I have a Corsair Brother Yule. Um, this is a very short novella um, that takes place after book three in the Corsair Brothers series. And it's about just like the Corsair Brothers during Christmas time. Nothing, nothing else much to it. I gave this one 3.5 out of five stars. I'm just trying to read everything about Ruby Dixon. So this was a novella that I needed to read. <laughs> then I ended up reading Wicked Designs by Lauren Smith. Um, I picked this one up because uh, the third book in this series, this is the League of Rogues series. Um, I believe book three has disability rep, like good, sorry, there's a hair, <laughs> uh, good disability representation. And so I really want to read this series. I've heard good things about Lauren Smith. Um, so I decided to just pick this one up. This is another kidnapping romance. So our heroine in here, Emily, she ends up getting kidnapped by, what's his name? Godric, his name's Godric. He's the Duke of Essex. Um, yeah, she ends up getting kidnapped by him because her uncle, who's her guardian, owes him a huge debt. And so he's gonna kidnap his niece to kind of like spur him to 
to pay to pay up basically but what he doesn't expect is when he kidnaps emily that he's gonna fall in love with her this one was super fun at times but i also felt like there was a lot going on um there's just also like evil man out to get emily to force her to be his wife and emily's trying to escape captivity a lot and it was a little bit of a it was like a lot to me kind of um this one was like okay to me i think i'm gonna give it like 3.5 stars i haven't written my review yet but i felt like this was just like a lot going on and i really just want to read the other books in the series and see how i like it i think we got introduced in this book who all the other heroes are in the series so i look forward to their books but i felt like there were certain times in this book where the romance was kind of like put on the wayside and more side characters were introduced like it was more focused on the side characters and the main couple if that makes sense. And the last book that I ended up reading in January is Sweet Tooth by Cassie Mint. I had to go to a doctor's appointment and I was waiting in there for quite a long time and I read like 70, I started this book in the doctor's office and I read up to like 70%. <laughs> But it's like an 80 page novella. This one's really cute and really sweet. So our heroine in here, um, she is the niece to this like big rich man or whatever. They are clients to this law firm company where our hero works and he's been tasked that he will become partner at the law firm if he ends up kind of being this girl's babysitter for two weeks. Um, she is a baker and she wants to start this banking company um, where she like sells cake pops at um, like local big businesses, uh, like law firms and stuff like that um, because they need sweet treats too. And so she's gonna do like a trial run at his law firm. And so he is in charge of her for the next two weeks to make sure nothing bad happens to her. So while she's doing that, they end up falling for each other. This was quick and sweet. I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna give this book four stars uh, for tropes. I'm picking off the top of my head because I haven't written my review yet. Um, there's like baking in here, an office romance. I think it's age gap. I think he's significantly older than her. That's all I could think of right now, but um, definitely a good like baking baker romance. It was really sweet. I'm gonna give this one four out of five stars. Anyways, so you have which those are all of the books that I read in the later half of January. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a cupcake emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.